Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the 311 Griffin YouTube channel. We're going to be talking about Karsten's FAC script that I did the highlight video of, or the hype video, maybe you would say. I don't know what you would call it. Uh, here is the location. You can get it from the user files. I will post a link in this the description of this video. You can find a description uh, or a link for it in the description of the other video that I did. Uh, before we get into this, the normal stuff, uh, help me out if you can, like, share, comment, subscribe, join the channel, throw thanks up on the video, whatever, uh, even better, give to charity and tell me about it. It helps me, uh, restore my faith in humanity when people do that. Also, if you haven't check out this channel formerly known as Douglas Wrangle. Great channel, kind of casual, more relaxed missions, but really fun to watch. A lot of good stuff there, a lot of content as well. And uh, I just enjoy watching his videos. Um, they're just kind of cool to watch. So uh, back here, you're going to download this. We're just going to talk about how to utilize this script. You're going to download it. Uh, it's a script and this user guide, don't worry, the user guide is eight pages long. You're only going to need about five or six of those pages. Uh, go ahead and read it all um, from start to finish. But this goes through all of the things you need to do to make this script work. And those are the things that we're going to talk about in detail today. So you may not even need this video. You might uh, just be able to look at this and figure it all out. So the file location where I saved this script for just my own use with my missions is C drive users max powers my name this would be your name uh, save games your DCS folder missions and then my scripts that's where I save it for that if you're gonna use this for some shared missions uh, be sure to credit Karsten or Don Rudy be sure to th throw credit in your readme file or, or somewhere in your mission, but that's going to get rolled into your .miz file. It's going to be compressed with that. Um, but for your own use, you can just put it in that script folder. Okay, we're in our DCS mission editor. I've already thrown some targets down. You can throw whatever targets you want, wherever you want. These have nothing to do with the script. The targets are whatever you want in the mission. So we're going to start with our player aircraft. You can use a helicopter. I was going to show using a helicopter in this video, but uh, they're slower. It's a little bit harder to show. I'm not as good with the UH-1 or the Gazelle, which are a little bit more likely to be kind of used with this script, I think, in, in a realistic way than the Apache is. I have used it with the Apache, and it was kind of fun. But I'm just going to, I'm actually also not going to be very realistic here. I'm going to throw an F-16 in. Typically not going to be your forward air controller aircraft, but uh, I'm going to, that's what I'm going to use because it's fast and I like it. And it has a CCIP pipper so I can usually get my rockets on target pretty easily. So this name here doesn't matter that much. The group name doesn't matter. This task doesn't really matter either. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put, uh, this is the task, um, just because I want to, but it doesn't matter so much. Be sure to set it to player. This pilot name absolutely matters. And I recommend setting it to all caps player because that's what the, what is in the script. And you should in theory be able to use whatever you want here as long as it matches what's in the script, but I don't want to edit that part of the script. So then I'm going to set my altitude and my airspeed and I'm going to go ahead and slap a waypoint out here okay now the basic rule is your aircraft needs to be able to fire rockets we just need to be able to file file fire spotter rockets and that's it that's the only limitation and I'm using white phosphorus here I do want to change my skin because I always do. I always use my skin. Well, I don't always use my skin. Sometimes I use other skins. That's all we need to do on the player aircraft. That took longer to explain than it's going to take you to do it. It's pretty easy. 
Now we're going to set up our bomber aircraft. Now the rule for the bomber aircraft is they have to have a ground attack task and the ordnance you're going to be dropping right now, it's just iron bombs, cluster bombs, and rockets. Uh, you may be able to, to utilize some other ordnance, but I think for the most part that you're going to want to limit yourself to those things. Iron bombs, cluster bombs, and rockets. It's got to be a ground attack aircraft. That's it. So right off the bat, the name, I suggest just sticking with Bomber 1, Bomber 2, Bomber 3, and it is the group name that matters here. This, uh, on, on your bombers, your attack aircraft, your support aircraft, the pilot name doesn't matter, but the group name does. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and switch that to ground attack. That matters. You've got to have that task set as ground attack. We're going to make these A10C2s. Veteran is fine. Now, what I'm going to do here, I always set up my first aircraft first, and then I add units to it. We're going to put him at 10,000 feet. 240 knots is fine. We are going to slap a waypoint out here. And I suggest putting one waypoint where you want them to start the the orbit and make sure that you always start the orbit at one. You don't have to, but again, you're going to have to edit the script file more if you don't do that. So we're going to, we're going to put it in like so. And now we're going to go to the second one. We're going to set up again. This doesn't matter for the script, but we're going to set up our skin. And then I have this loadout for my bomber one group. Now, when you're setting up your aircraft, you need to take note of if you have rockets or not, and then how many of the other ordnance types you have that the script can utilize. So in this case, I have, these are all Mark 82 uh, high drag bomb, or uh, sorry, low drag bombs. And I have three, six, eight, ten of those bombs. And then these are all CBU 97s, and I have four of those. So I need to keep that in my mind, make a note of it, write it down, whatever, because you need to tell the script how many it has so that it can do its mathematical calculations uh, as you're calling in the strike. Because you're going to be telling uh, the game how many of each ordnance piece you want to drop. Uh, okay, that's all we need to do in here. So now I can come back out here. This is completely set up. I want to add two aircraft. So I'll just do that. Now I'm going to jump back in here. This is a little nitpicky thing, and I'm just going to change that skin to my other one that's of the same unit. So that, that group is done. Okay. So they're going to fly out here to waypoint one. They're going to start their orbit. And then my intention is that whenever I call them in, they will, from wherever they are, they will come over here and attack and then go back to waypoint one and start their orbit again. Cool. So you can put whatever you want in as long as they can do ground attack and use those ordnance types. I'm going to throw a group of Apaches in. We're going to put them over here. Again, the group name matters and we're going to go bomber two. So uh, best, uh, best use here or the, uh, best practice is to name your first group bomber one, second group bomber two, third group bomber three, and so on and so forth. I would also recommend you utilizing the same types of planes and loadouts for bomber if, between missions. So if I go to set up another mission, um, I would want to use a-10s with this loadout for bomber one and H 64s with the loadout I'm about to set up as bomber two. You don't have to do that. It just means you have to, uh, you don't have to edit the script as much. And what I plan on doing is setting up a few kind of mission templates and then creating a different script with a unique name that tells me what it's for, for each of those mission templates. That way I've got, I just call up the right script for the aircraft that I have in the air, if that makes sense. It takes a lot of organization up front, but it just means that you don't have to edit the script later on. Um, you might find it easier just to edit the script every time you make a mission, but um, I just have that one script right now, so uh, so I don't really want to do it that way. But anyway, we've got Bomber 2. We need to change this to Ground Attack, and all of that is okay. I want him to be pretty low. We're going to make him, let's just say 300 feet. 
and I want him to be going 60 knots. I'm going to switch this back. Uh, okay. So again, we're going to, whoops, uh, there we go. We're going to add one waypoint, and then we're going to add a perform task orbit. And I just want him to do that at 60 knots, slow, kind of a slow orbit. Now we're going to go back in here, and I want him just to have rockets, because he, Hellfires aren't really part of this uh, close air support script. It'd be cool if they were, maybe someday. Um, and then we're going to set up our Trogdor livery. Um, actually, but I can just do this right here. Add my second unit and then change him to Matt. Okay. So that is set up. We've got Bomber 1, Bomber 2. We've got our player aircraft. That's all good. Now, the only other thing that we need is to set up our trigger. I'm going to delete this. We're going to start it from scratch. It's a once, no event trigger. Best practice always to name these. Always name your scripts. And then I, depending on what kind of script they are, I have my own kind of internal uh, coloring scheme to help. Once I get a lot of scripts in here, I will. it's easier to pick them apart. In theory, you can leave this blank, but it's going to try to load the script at the beginning of the mission while it's loading everything else. So best practice again to do time more and then put 3, 5, 10, something like that in here. It's going to wait that many seconds before it tries to load this file. We're going to say do script file. And again, here's my save location. C, users, max power, save games, open beta, missions, my scripts. We're going to load that up. Okay, now save the mission. Now let's jump back out and we're going to look at the script file. Okay, so here's the script file. Again, he's done a very good job with this. It's very helpful. We've got a lot of commented out sections with descriptions of what you need to do and how you need to do it. The first block that we're going to mess with is this. Because we named our player aircraft player, we don't have to adjust that. You can, you can make this whatever you want it to be anything at all this is going to show up in your radio communications that the script uh, generates for us um, then down here we have bomber one and this is why i say make them bomber one bomber two um, let's say that this said uh, skyhawk okay that's what's going to show up in the f10 menu whenever you go to call it in so you, you basically it can be anything you want here but you want it to be something that lets the player know, oh, that's an A10C. And if you've downloaded uh, Karsten's demo mission with it that uses the OV-10 Bronco as your spotter aircraft, uh, it has multiple groups of the same kind of aircraft. So it'll say like a, uh, A4 Skyhawk North, A4 Skyhawk South. So you can do some things like that so that you know what they are. But this is this is very important. This is very important. Those have to be the correct values. This can be whatever you want. And then, like we discussed uh, in the mission editor, I had 10 iron bombs. I have four cluster bombs. If this had a two in it, I would want to come in and change it to zero. If this was full for rockets, I would want this tells the script uh, that I have rockets on that plane, but I don't. So I need to change that back to nil for no rockets. This can be whatever you want. This is that waypoint. So if I put in two waypoints before I started my orbit, I would need to change that to two so that the game would know or the script would know to send the plane back to waypoint two to start the orbit after it does its attack run. So I used to have F-14s in here. That's what I was using for my second bomber group. But now I have AH-64Ds. Again, this field doesn't matter. It's just what pops up in the F10 menu. And because I don't have any bombs, uh, iron bombs, cluster bombs, fire bombs, those are all set to zero. Rockets are set to full. Um, this can be whatever you want. This is uh, this is what comes up in the radio chatter. This is what comes up in the radio menu. And then waypoint one again. So um, I meant to have I meant to go through this and actually edit it, but because I'd already had it set up. That is what it is. If you want to add more, um, 
units, more bomber units, then you just basically copy that and then paste it in. And I like to put a space. I like to keep all of this neat and tidy, so I put another space in there. Um, and then you could change this to whatever you want. So let's let's do this. Let's put a third group in there. And we're going to call it Bomber 3, Bomber 3. And we're going to make these... Uh, we'll make them F-18s. So we're going to say F-A-18C. And we're going to give them... Uh, we're going to give them, um, let's say, four iron bombs, and I don't remember if we can do cluster bombs. We'll just give them four iron bombs, just for fun. And I'm going to name them, um, I'm just going to call this Gomer Pile, just for fun. Okay, so that all looks good. So now I just have to remember that I gave them four iron bombs. We're going to save that. And we're going to go back in and just add that group in and then play the mission. So we've just got to remember four iron bombs and it's bomber three, waypoint one. That's all we've got to know. Okay, so let's come over here and we're going to call this bomber three. Obviously, you guys get it. Change this to ground attack again. Change this to FA-18C. I'm going to put him at 18,000 feet over Damascus, add a waypoint there, add, perform task, orbit, 350, let's come into here once again, I've got lots of these, we're going to make him this guy. Oh yeah, we're gonna give them we're gonna give them some bigger bombs, I think. Ground attack. So we'll just build us a new payload. And you know, I want him to be able to defend himself, so we'll give him a couple of aim nine X's. And then here we want bombs, and I want a single. Oh yeah, let's give him one of these. I like this. Give him some big old boys. And we'll give him a fuel tank. Okay, so we'll make a second one. And we will change this second one to Warlock's skin. There we go. That looks mean. And that should be all we have to do. Right? Okay, our script loaded. I'm going to go ahead and check to make sure that this is correct. Yeah, there we go. Okay, let's exit that real quick. I'm going to set my plane up real quick. AG. Let's turn our Hickmas on. Or HMD, whatever you want to call it. I'm trying to get in the habit of... It's hard to click those, but I'm trying to get in the habit of turning those off. Okay. All right, I know my targets are down there. I built the mission, so I know where they are. So let's go ahead and call in using our radio, F-10, request strike. We're going to call in the A-10Cs, and we're going to tell it cluster bombs. And we are going to say, let's just do a single. So what's going to happen is each aircraft in the group is going to drop a single bomb. If you said half, they would each draw drop half. If you said two, they would each drop two. Okay, so I'm going to call them again. F10, strike options, and I'm going to do attack heading. And we're going to do kind of a northwest to southeast kind of a thing, if I'm, if I'm looking at that correctly. Okay, so now they are ready for a rocket. I want to make sure that I'm on single. Yep. Rockets, single. And our targets are right down there. Uh, 
and I'm going to try not to get shot. We got shot anyway. Smoke's on the correct location. That's good. So this guy is rolling in on our smoke. And his buddy's up in front of him. Okay, they're shooting at the lead. So his his bomb should be away. All right, this one's bomb is away. We see a lot of a lot of skeets going down there, or the parachute ordnance, whatever you call those. Nice. There's a poor civilian going by. All right. <laughs> Basically, once once that attack run is done, you can just call all whoever you want in again. You could call these guys in, have them drop um, another cluster bomb. They've got four more or three more, so six total. Uh, you can have them drop those iron bombs. You could have your F-18s come in and drop those big boys. You could have these guys come in and do a rocket attack, which would be kind of fun. I would not recommend doing more than one attack run at a time. You really need to limit it to one because I think the script's going to get, well, it's undoubtedly going to get conflicted if you try to make more aircraft come in at one time. So um, so you could possibly set this up with two different scripts on two different radio channels. Um, maybe. Maybe where um where you could call in you you could you'd have to set up uh different bomber groups for each script but you could kind of run them in parallel where you call one in and then as they're running in you designate another target for the second one and then you can switch back and forth but that would be pretty confusing and i don't think it's necessary i think it'd be a lot more fun just to do do it this way um where you can kind of do bda uh, watch them roll in, watch them attack the targets, do the BDA, and then uh, call in an, another strike package. So um, that is it. That's all there is to it. Uh, it's a really cool script. I'm super, super excited about it. And, and the reason is because this kind of stuff adds so much to the game. Um, and, it, and it can actually influence the way... DCS is built in the future or things that are added to DCS in the future um, there's a lot I love games that have a strong modding community because they lengthen life of the game they expand the capabilities in the game and they give the devs ideas for things to include in the game later and they even help the devs get there in a way that you know you never know this script could be something that is incorporated into the game somehow in the future or something like it you know uh, there's a very real possibility for that so this kind of stuff really expands the game and makes it better for everyone in the community so go check it out um, uh, support Karsten and, and modders uh, scripters mission builders like him 
Uh, there's so many out there in the community. Support them when and where you can and enjoy the game. Uh, I hope this was helpful. Happy flying. Thank you.